If you want to find out how to finish your Chinese war by 1939, have a strong economy and strong army, then watch this Japanese guide until the end. And this guide will be going over the army, navy and air force management, what researches you should go for, national focuses, the Spanish civil war as well as the Chinese war and how to get ready for the war with the allies after the Chinese war is over. If we get 2000 likes on this video, I'm also going to do another video video that shows the 1939 to 1945 moves that you should do as Japan. When discussing your army, you actually start off with 60 divisions, but most of your divisions are badly equipped. We have 30 garrison divisions organized in an army of 24 and another one of 6. We're going to keep the 24 units in the peninsula here and we're going to use them to navally invade parts of China when the war starts. The other 6, we're going to do the same thing, except we're going to keep them on the island of Taiwan. Whilst the main 15 units, which are actually properly equipped and trained units, will keep by the border with the Chinese in the north, as well as by the border with Shang-Chi. We don't want to put too many troops here, as the supply limit would be too low and we would start losing to attrition early on. Make sure you get a second theater of operations that you keep your special units in. I got six units in this one. They will be in the back line for the time being. Once the war starts, we'll assign them to the front line, but until then, they're gonna stay there. The nine cavalry units as well in the back line for the time being and we will assign them once we make a beachhead in the south or central part of China. We're also recruiting 15 more units of CAV so we have a 24 divisions army as well as three more divisions of marines. Don't recruit too many units because you will not have the infantry equipment to equip these units anyway. Assign nine factories to your infantry equipment and once you get more factories make it a full 15 factories. Two for support equipment for the time being, three for artillery and keep one and one for the planes. We don't need that right now we need to focus on our infantry air force wise select and disband all of your units and afterwards make four squadrons of 100 planes each two fighters and two close air support make sure they're training and once we get more planes we're going to use more planes but for the time being that's going to be it do the same for your carrier planes disband and assign squadrons of 10 planes each the reasons for this is because each one of the carriers flight deck can sustain 20 planes so you can have 10 of one type and another 10 of a different type in the same module. Making 10 plane squadrons very easy to swap around in your fleets. This is also the reason why we keep 100 planes in each of these land squadrons because each airport level offers 200 maximum planes. When it comes to your navy, the first thing you want to do is merge all of your navy, then you want to divide them into submarine fleet and combined fleet, which is basically everything else except submarines. Train at the very start the ships that do not have the experience and keep in a separate task force the ships that are already trained whilst you do the same thing for the submarines. After this is done, you're going to be dividing and make sure you have 10 submarines in each one of your task forces for the submarine fleet. Whilst the combined fleet, you keep all your main ships in the main task force set to strike force whilst you keep an extra 6 to 9 task forces of 10 ships each, 2 light cruisers and the rest destroyers. But I'm going to show you that in a while after we finish training all of our fleets here. Start recruiting the agents, that means form your agency from the very start since we want to send some spies over in China before the war begins. And also get all the steel and the aluminium that you can get from Manchuko since it only takes one factory to get all of these from your puppet. Cancel all the oil that you're getting from the US and once you need oil you can get again oil either from the US or Venezuela but it's a good way of using your factories for something else. We're also going to be going to our occupation screen and we're going to be giving back the province of Dalian to our vassal here, Manchuko. The reason for this is because we only have 5% compliance strength. Similar to this peninsula, same thing, 5%, so we're not really getting 36 tungsten and 24 steel. We're only getting a small amount of this because we don't have too much compliance. It would take a very long time for this compliance to go up, so it actually is better for you if you just release this nation as a puppet and you Use your puppet, also from the same screen, return Dalian to Manchuko. Keep this area here as we need it, and we don't want to return it to communist China or regular China. Some people might be wondering, hey, why is he releasing this? Well, because instead of getting almost nothing from the tungsten and the steel, I can get all of that by using one single factory. There you go. I'm now getting 41 tungsten whenever I need it. I don't need it right now, though, so I'm not going to ask for the tungsten. But when I need it, similar with the steel, I will be getting all the steel and tungsten that I need from this. Take note 
we're also gonna go for free trade so most of our resources we're gonna have to trade for and trading with your puppet gives you vastly more resources than you'd otherwise be getting not to mention because of having two of these guys here we can request garrison support and this is gonna give us a buttload of troops that we'll be using in order to garrison occupied territories 30,000 and another 30,000 we're now getting 60,000 or better yet 61.77,000 manpower from our puppets to occupy provinces do not release Mariana Federation or Federation Micronesia even though you don't have much compliance there you do have some provinces that you have cores on so you want to make sure that you hold on to these states you're also going to get an event that asks you whether you want to release the Marianas do not do it keep them as a part of your country once you've gotten 50 political power you should prioritize steel for guns this is a decision that you have that gives you extra military factories that you definitely will need to boost the amount of infantry equipment that you are producing by an extra four factories meaning that you should finish all of your equipment production within the year when it comes to the research that you're doing start with a basic machine tools construction one electrical mechanical engineering and improved airplane catapult this is important as we want to put the improved airplane catapult in us in our fleets so that we can detect submarines or else the US would just wreak havoc on our fleets without proper detection later on keep on doing dispersed industry construction to disperse to improved machine tools mechanical computing radio and radio detection also research the type 3 heavy machine guns interwar artillery type 94 anti-tank and change most importantly your battle doctrine from the grand battle plan which is the worst one of the doctrines to the superior firepower you want to do this after you've researched one of these slots dedicated to the new land doctrine as we want to go down this doctrine line quite fast in the early game when the spanish civil war starts we're gonna break away four divisions from the main army and we're gonna assign them over to hitoshi here we're gonna send our volunteers we can send four divisions we'll send the extra divisions that we just built send air volunteers as well and we're gonna give this out to the nationalists of course we don't want the other side to win send as many of the planes that you can send as volunteers it should be up to around 200 units or 200 planes better yet make sure you assign the air superiority or interception missions and by the time our troops get there our planes should arrive as well it is vital that you send these volunteers to the Spanish because you're gonna get a buttload of military experience both army experience and air experience from the Spanish Civil War which will help us modify our current templates to actually decent templates by the time that we start our war with China in the Spanish Civil War make sure you clear out the northern enclave first so you have a proper land mass that is yours or better yet the Spanishes but do make sure that you do not finish this war too soon you want to drag this war as long as possible so you get as much experience both army experience and air experience as possible also make sure to use the strategic redeployment so that you can move troops around the battlefield faster than you otherwise would be able to move them also recommend that you research the cryptology and you assign this in China so you get a bit more information about what's happening when the war starts and that you assign your initial spy to build a spy network in China at the same time you want to be researching the passive defensiveness as well as anti-partisan once we have five technologies we're gonna recruit a second operative which is what we really do need once you got your first 30 army experience you're gonna modify the Chuton Shishidan and you're gonna add artillery as a support as well as increase this to a 20 combat with infantry only division design it means we're gonna have very few infantry equipment and we're gonna be really behind with the infantry equipment but within half a year we should have all of these guns for our troops once we get more army experience we'll modify the rest of the division templates that we have also when it comes to your national focuses start if you're going historical by purging the Kodoha faction guide the Zaibatsu national mobilization a research slot national war industry since we need the extra research slot to get our very backwards country up to speed also as you can see I've pretty much started researching all the other industrial options together with mechanical computing and the key 27 I've also switched on over to superior firepower I am gonna research this one once I have a hundred extra army experience which makes it 200 days less research time I will after I finish start researching interwar artillery type 3 heavy machine guns as well as start my research for the air doctrines back to the focus trees you want to also go down the liaison 
Conference, Greater East Asian Coast Prosperity Sphere, and Marco Polo Incident so we can start attacking the Chinese and go for the new naval estimates, army expansion laws, work your way to the zero which is extremely important for our war effort as well as afterwards work your way to the torpedo cruisers so we have an actually viable design of ships against the Americans later on. You should be able to do the prepare collaboration government at least once in China before you declare your war and that is great because what this means is basically that once we occupy these lands after the war we will have more compliance level than we would have otherwise. By this time the amount of experience that you've gained from the Spanish Civil War should get you a standard 20 width cav division with artillery support standard 20 width infantry division with all of the support that you need for it remember this is your main assault unit for the entirety of the war but you also should be able to get the 40 width standard division with the attached artillery and the support brigades keep in mind though not all of your units are going to be able to become 40 width divisions by the start of the war which is why I recommend that you only make six up to eight divisions as the 40 width divisions as you will be quite short of infantry equipment and towed artillery at this point you should also start diverting your production and start making a couple of planes but not too many still mainly focus on getting the infantry equipment artillery units and the support equipment that you need so that we have an easy and fast war in China After after you've done the Marco Polo bridge incident, start doing the national defense as well as spiritual mobilization and it is time to declare war on China. Now before we declare our war on the Chinese, remember that you need to have enough troops by the border with them, otherwise they will break through as they do have more troops than you. Your main advantage is the fact that you have better quality troops, set the same by the border with Shangxi if they join the Chinese United Front, which they likely will have, and set your naval invasions ready from Taiwan one and afterwards from the other parts into the central part of China. Declare your war. Also ensure that once you declare your war, actually before you declare your war, you have your navy set on the right task forces. So I have all of my submarines raiding the coastline here to prevent the Chinese from getting any supplies. And I have six patrol forces around the Chinese coastline and my own coastline with the main strike force composed of the main actual fleet. As well as I set my airplanes to support my units here as well as destroy whatever ships they might have in the bay and other close air support set to close air support. This is not going to be an easy time but it is going to be a fun time because we're going to get a bunch load of army experience, air and naval experience. Don't be in a rush to finish this war fast. Take at least one year with it so you get enough army experience to boost up your land doctrine as well as the other experiences. As you can see we can hold this line for as long as possible. They're not going to break through our lines as we have better equipped troops. Now that being said, you can start making your beachheads into the south. I recommend you start doing this after you've drained the northern Chinese armies a little bit. Don't be shy, give out war bonds as well. This is going to be really useful for you. And remember to escalate the war in China so that you get rid of the debuff that you start with when you declare your war on the Chinese. We're gaining quite a bit of experience now, army experience, both air experience. And we have started our invasion in the south part of China. Take note that your south invasion here should be backed up after you make a beachhead by extra infantry units or cavalry units so you can fill up the gaps. I've sent my extra 21 cav division so I can fill in all the gaps and start making a larger front in the south part. At the same time, 10,000 more units are going to be invading this Qingdao area so that we have a pincer movement around the northern army. Eventually, we'll be cutting off and destroying the entire northern North Chinese army here. Let them keep on attacking you. Do not attack. It's literally just free experience right now. Look at how fast this thing is going. It's literally every single hour you almost get 0.20 army experience. If you want to finish the war quick, you do have your chance when you attack in the south to just go for the control points and finish this war fast. But I really don't recommend you do that. Establish a front here. 
and grind experience as much as you need to. You want to get the land doctrines researched with the experience you gain from here, similar with the air doctrines as well. Remember to always go for the escalate war in China decision when it pops off and to develop the Palau Boxit deposits, which should be doable after you've researched excavation too. Also, by now, you should have a few extra air squadrons and uh, make sure you establish these squadrons and help out in the Nanjing South area. After you've established the beachhead in Qingdao, as you can see, we cut off a portion of the Chinese army. It is quite a few divisions and after we've crushed these divisions, it is going to weaken the Chinese considerably. Also, through the power of army experience, we've managed to advance our land doctrine quite a bit, shaving off 200 days from it. You also should realize that for the inter-service rivalry, the first three should be prioritized steel for guns, indiscriminate conscription so you get enough manpower, and naval aircraft construction so you get super cheap tier 2 zero fighters. Also continue to recruit divisions and take note that you can copy some of your Manchuko vassal here divisions. Make sure you edit them so they're proper divisions and then put them out. This is great because it actually uses the manpower of Manchuko, not your own manpower. But that being said, you shouldn't really have problems with manpower. The only massive benefit from this is the fact that you can just spawn the units in the Manchuko lands directly rather than having to ship them over from Japan. Keep dividing the enemy army and making small pockets such as these and the ones that we had previously in the north. Through this you can isolate or starve out of supplies the enemy armies and as you can see we managed to kill off 82,000 of their infantry equipment whilst we only lost about 10,000 on the Chinese front itself. If it is a multiplayer game you likely will be asked to finish the Chinese war by some year in particular depending on the rules. If it's a single player game grind the hell out of this war. The more you grind it the faster you can get your land doctrine researched as well as the air doctrine at the same time. Two more very important things to note is the fact that once you have the cryptology available and you've broken the code for China, use this to your advantage, reveal the intel when you're doing a push and you're advancing within the Chinese territory as this will help in your battles considerably. The other thing that you should know is that you always should should maintain your borders alongside rivers or mountains, basically geographical areas that make it easier for your troops to hold their ground when the enemy counterattacks. After you've broken off and encircled enough Chinese divisions, they will not have enough infantry equipment to supply and support their armies. Even though they have pretty much infinite manpower, they still lack severely the infantry equipment to fight this war, which is something you should not be too stressed about as you can see 27 days behind on infantry equipment which is quite okay that being said you probably noticed i didn't make a buttload of infantry divisions almost the same as the ones we started with it's all about min maxing properly managing and not losing any of your starting divisions you might have to micro a little bit more than usual but it is definitely worth it and these strategic points are gonna fall one by one as well as the massive encirclements that you'll do will definitely pay off. Once you finish your war, you have a few options. If it's multiplayer, Manchiko would get all the cores on China, and it's better to just give them everything. If it's a single player, you have a second option, which is to puppet China and just feed them all of the rest of China, whilst you keep the coastline, or you could just take everything and wait for the compliance to go up. The benefit of making the puppet, however, is the fact that you get pretty much unlimited manpower, and a puppet that is strong enough to build its own armies and industry. But even so, it's better to just have our name on the map, isn't it? After the war in China is finished, we need to start getting ready for the big war against the Allies. That means that we need more divisions. Try and get around 200 divisions before you start the war with the Allies, as well as as many carrier fighter troops as possible. Produce them as you will definitely need them throughout the war. By taking the lands in China, you can also develop some special deposits such as the oil, aluminum, and 
steel deposits that will come in handy. Update your templates if you have not done so. Make sure you get the 40 width where needed as well as keep the 20 width where needed. And make a proper light armor division which should be 6 light tank brigades and 4 motorized brigades. You can also update this to a medium tank division which is literally the same thing just replace all the tanks with medium tanks once you have them researched. Fleet wise aside from the submarine fleet your main fleet make sure you update the starting light cruisers. So how do you update them? Most importantly fill up the blanks. So for example this one here we're gonna add the catapult tier 2, anti-air 2, sonar and secondary batteries. This means it's only gonna take 26 days to update this unit. Do not change engines or anything of the sorts. Look at this if you change the engine it doubles actually it triples instead of 26 it takes up to 100 days. So do not change the engines. Leave the engines as they are. Simply fill in the blanks for each new design that you have and once you've researched the torpedo cruisers start producing those in mass as they will be your front line against the Americans. If you guys would like me to cover that part of the game I could do a secondary guide for Japan spamming between 1939 to 1945 so leave a comment below let me know if you want me to do that and if the video say gets 2000 likes I definitely will do a video for that topic. So thank you guys for watching this Hoi4 guide I hope you enjoyed it if you did definitely leave a like and subscribe for more videos like these in the future. I also want to give a very special thank you to all of my patrons and channel members as well as my Twitch subscribers. Thank you so much guys for all the support. I wouldn't be able to make these videos without you.